Ah, so this will be our last question for the day. And I'm going to be difficult and I'm going to completely get rid of this question. I don't like it when they, well, not, I don't mind that they do it, but we don't need to know question 10.1. They always ask the same type of stuff. I will show it to you just now, but um, I just want to show you something. So this is the way these questions work. Um, so what I always tell students to do is the following. Start at the question. The question says, for which value of R will the area be a maximum? Okay, so what do they want? They want the area. That is what they want. I don't care about any of this stuff right now. I know how optimization questions work. They all follow the same recipe. So what you go do is you go find a formula for area. Okay, so they want the area of the stage. Now they said that the stage is the semicircle and the rectangle. So we need to go find the area of that. Now we know that area is length times breadth for a rectangle. So that would be B multiplied by 2R. That would be the length. Okay, so that's the, that's the rectangle. Plus, we know that the area of a circle is pi R squared. But we only have half of a circle. So we'll say half pi r squared. Okay, fantastic. Life is looking good. We have just found a formula for area. Okay, now what do they want us to do? They want us to find the maximum. If I give you a graph, how do you find the maximum point? It is a turning point. So you make your first derivative equal to zero. That is how you find a minimum or a maximum. So we want to take the first derivative. So we need the first derivative. But we have a problem. We cannot take the first derivative of this. Why? How many different variables do we have? Um, let me just put my video back on. We have two variables. Can you see? We've got b and we've got r. So we have two variables. So what do we need to do? We need to replace one of them. Now, this is where you use the extra information that they've given you. And here it is. The perimeter of the stage is 60. Aha. So that is what we now use to find our extra information. So let me show you what that would look like. Guys, these optimization questions, they all work the same. Trust me. So we know that the perimeter for this, the perimeter is the distance around the shape. So we know that this piece here would be 2R. This place is B. This one is B. This here would be the circumference divided by 2. You know, this part here, that is the circumference divided by 2. And we know that the circumference of a circle is 2 pi R, but we only want half of that. So that means the circumference for us is just going to be pi r. So we can say that 60 is equal to 2r, which is this piece, plus two of these, plus this piece over here, which is pi times radius. So we can say pi r. So let's just simplify that a bit. 60 is equal to 2r plus 2b plus pi r. So now what we could do is we could either get the r value alone or we could get the b value alone. It doesn't really matter what you want to do, but I think I'm going to get the b value alone. So I'm going to say 2b is equal to 60 minus 2r minus pi r. Then I'm going to divide everything by 2. So that's going to give me 30 minus r minus a half pi r. OK, so guys, now look what happens. You see how we now have an expression for b? So what you now do is you take that expression for b and you put it in over there. OK, and that is probably, oh, I just erased my, I erased all of the stuff over here. <laughs> 
whoopsie, but that's exactly what they asked us to do at 10.1. Determine an expression for B in terms of R. That is exactly what they're doing, but we needed to do that anyways. And that is why I crossed it out. I don't know how it became uncrossed. Anyway, I must have clicked something. But that is why I blocked this question off because we need to do that anyways. We always have to do that, but they're just guiding you along in the exam. Okay, so we can now say that A is equal to whatever B is, which is going to be 30 minus R minus a half pi R times 2R. Okay, plus a half pi r squared. Now what you do is you just go simplify a little bit. So I'm going to multiply the 2r in. So that's going to be 60r minus 2r squared minus pi r squared, because the half and the two cancel out, plus a half pi r squared. Okay, these two can go together. Actually, all of this can go together. So I'm going to type that on my calculator. I'm going to type in minus 2 minus pi plus a half pi. OK, no, I'm just going to say, um, I guess we could. No, I don't want to work with decimals right now. OK, so what we can do is we can say that A is equal to 60R um, minus 2. So minus pi plus a half pi would be still be negative 0, 0,5 pi r squared. Let me just make a wait. It's 2 r squared. Minus pi plus a half pi is minus 0 0.5 pi r squared. OK, so now what we can do, guys, is we could take the first derivative because that's what we'd want to do. Remember, we said that to find the minimum or the maximum, you need to take the first derivative. Remember, on a graph, to find a maximum, you make the first derivative equal to zero. So here you're going to say that the derivative of the area with respect to the variable r, remember, we only have one variable now, r. We don't have two variables like we did earlier, which is a good thing. And so that's going to give you 60 minus 4r minus pi r, because this 2 multiplies by the 0 0.5 to become 1. So I just took the first derivative, and then I make the first derivative equal to 0. OK, and then I'm going to take the 4, um, I'm going to take the the 4r and the pi r over equals to 60. You can take out r as a common factor if you want. And then r would be equal to 60 divided by 4 plus pi. And so the r value should be 8.40 meters, 8.40 meters.